Sontag, and I get to bring you God's Word today. Our verse for today comes from John chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Very simple verses. This is the testimony John gave when the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny. He confessed, I am not the Christ. I want you to imagine a scenario where you're going on a trip across the United States. You'll be traveling to Texas where you're going to meet up with the rest of your family. You have to work. You need to leave a few days later than they do. As you are about to leave, your phone rings and your mom says, there was dangerous traffic and a lot of construction and it's just going to be crazy. Check your map and see if there's a better way. Try a different route. You leave on your trip, relieved that you missed the traffic. Your phone rings again. This time, your dad. He says, hey, we stayed in an awesome hotel in Missouri. Great food, clean rooms, a heated pool, and it's right off the exit. You should stay there. You arrive in Missouri. The hotel lives up to the hype. It's comfortable, clean, all the amenities and more. Again, you embark on your journey and the phone rings again. Mom again. As we entered Texas, there were tons of police patrolling. I know you'll be anxious to get here, but watch your speed. Sure enough, as you drive through Texas, there are tons of police writing lots of citations for those that weren't careful with their speed. When you arrive, you can't help but thank your parents for making your trip as easy as possible. The end. How about we change the scenario a little bit? <clears throat> Mom and Dad sit you down and talk to you as you're leaving for college. I know there are plenty of temptations in life and in college. Sex, drugs, partying, avoiding church. But God gives us opportunities to avoid those things as a way to honor Him. Sins are tempting, but cause problems that leave you lonely, full of guilt, and feeling dirty, convicted, and ashamed. Please avoid those situations and follow the safer route that you have learned in church, chapel, and by studying God's Word. We have either experienced this or have someone close to us who has, and we want to spare you the pain and guilt of falling into these sins. The end. Are these two examples the same? Taking a road trip, leaving for college with some mom and dad advice? Understanding that people have gone ahead of you and know the dangers, distractions, and diversions that prevent you from getting to your destination is the main idea. Would you not be thankful that your journey was smooth because of the warnings given by someone who experienced them firsthand? Do you recognize that the advice that they gave was out of love and concern? So why is it different in Christian living? Why is it different when a parent, a teacher, a pastor, a friend tells you that your journey through life is taking a bad detour or that there is a way to be content and safe or that the consequences of your actions are not worth the temporary pleasure. The earthly consequences are obvious and the eternal consequences are severe, so why do we fight so hard against advice and still fall into sin? Life is a long journey. Your sinful nature will always battle against you. Your sinful nature will lead you towards something temporary. Your sinful nature will deceive and convict you. The only true comfort that we have is that Jesus became true man and lived on earth just like us. Jesus was tempted and withstood those temptations. One man from our verses here who brought that message and warned others was John the Baptist. Humble servant, forerunner of Christ, he stated simply, I am not the Christ. Rather, he was there to help people by warning those around him that they should look forward to the one who could navigate this world of sin. He's just one of the many people that God has put in your life with the same advice. Pastors, teachers, 
parents, classmates, friends. God knows that our navigation through this life won't be perfect. We are born imperfect, and we need a Savior. We need guidance, and we need freedom from the pain, suffering, and guilt of sin. We do, however, gain that freedom from Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. It gives us the assurance that because he lived a perfect life, we can enjoy the full and free forgiveness and promise of eternal life with him. We have nothing to offer in return, and so we offer our lives to him in humble, joyful service as witnesses of the truth to help guide others. Your long road trip through life? Enjoy it. And listen to those who happen to be further down the spiritual path and understand better how to navigate through it. Whether it be John the Baptist, Jesus himself, or perhaps a pastor or teacher, know that the advice that they give you is out of love for you and for our Savior. Amen. Dear God, our journey is long and complicated and full of detours, distractions, and diversions in the sin. Help us to humbly accept the advice of others and to model ourselves to your Son, Jesus. Help us to avoid temptations and to love our roles as children of God, redeemed and empowered by the truth of our future with you in heaven. Finally, 
Allow us the humility to accept spiritual advice that brings us closer to you. Amen.